So uh, I've never been officially taught how to wine taste, and I know Dennis has it because he usually just drinks out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> Henry David Thoreau said, many men go fishing all of their lives without knowing that it is not the fish they are after. Look at the size of that thing! I'm Dennis Isbister. For me, fishing has been a part of my whole life. From the time I could walk, I've been chasing fish and whatever adventure seemed to follow it. I'm Drew Murin, and since I was a little kid, my dad and I have fished all over the Western United States together. And all I've wanted to do ever since was travel the world, have a little fun, and fish with my good friend Dennis. You see that, baby? <laughs> so follow along with us as we travel the remote regions of the globe in search of wild fish, <laughs> wild places. Southern Patagonia is so sparsely populated that the sheep and guanaco outnumber people 100 to 1 out here. But where you do find people banding together, scratch out an existence in this harsh environment, you find a people full of passion and a zest for life. There's only one thing here in Southern Argentina that's as famous as the big fish, that's the Malbec wines. And even if you don't like wine, you come to Argentina, you're guaranteed to be a wine connoisseur lover for the rest of your life. Yeah, that actually made me a wine drinker. Let's go, Martin's buddy owns this place. He's gonna show us around. I never would've thought you liked wine. Oh, dude. Hey, John, hola. Hey, hey, hola, Juan. How do you pronounce that? Perito Moreno. Peru. Right there. Uh, there. Uh, boom. Sfioro l'idea di realizzare compositivamente una canzone da cantare in coro per... We made the best Malbec at the world yeah. in Argentina, especially in Notan de Cruzo, Mendoza. Drink a $70 bottle of wine. I think I would like keep it forever. <laughs> How do you drink this? Hey, you have to enjoy drop by drop. <laughs> One drop yeah. a day for a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been in the wine business? Uh, 10 years more or less. 10 years. Uh, 10 years in Calafate and in Buenos Aires, 4 or 5 years. So wine is only a portion. <laughs> the wine is only a portion of what they do here. Yeah. They tie a very secretive fly. <laughs> They're a very secret society in uh, yes, El yeah. Calafate. A fat day in the winter. Drinking wine, time flies. Waiting to see some. Yeah. Let's go. We went to Martin's friend's wine shop. I don't really know that much about wine. All I do know is that Malbec that they produce down there kind of got me started liking wine. So he kind of laid it out. Uh, since the 2004, let's say, uh, we have yeah. yeah. Everybody there had this connection through fishing to be where we're at. This guy started a wine shop in El Calafate so he could be closer to fly fishing. Definitely our kind of guy. So fly fishing brought you here yeah, sure. to open up a wine shop. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fascinating. The passion is fly fishing, the wine is sand bills. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Wow, uh, what a story. Yeah. Alcohol pays the bills. <laughs> and fly fishing, just like the rest of us. So what's your favorite wine? Can you show us your favorite wine? Wine... Malbec. Oh, I, I really like the blends. Yeah. The blends, I think that the best wine that we have in the country because it's more complex. And the winemaker make like uh, arts. Uh, mixing different kinds of grapes, so with the with the blend we we get the, the best of the winemaker. But this is one of the best Pinot from Macedonia. The owner of this winery is the owner of Sasikaya in Toscana. Sasikaya is one of the more famous wines in the world. Wow. In Toscana, Italy, and this is the same owner. The the history says that the guy was fly fishing in Patagonia and taste a Pinot from a colleague from Patagonia, from another one they call Umberto Canale, and fall in love with Patagonian wine. No way. Uh, say, I want to have my own project in Patagonia, and the guy uh, bought the farm and started to make the best Patagonian wines 
Uh, All over Rio fishing. Negro. All over fishing. The guy <laughs> came here fishing and he buys a vineyard. <laughs> the shop was really cool. I mean, wine shop down below, fly shop up atop. So we heard all kinds of great stories of how they actually made it to Argentina. All those members moved there just for the fly fishing, which was near and dear to our hearts. And he basically sells wine to afford his fishing habit, which is not a bad idea. La Tienda de Vinos. I must stop when you're in Patagonia. You might never, you might never leave. The next morning, we awoke no worse for the wear. And with only a few days left in our trip, we decided to try fishing the world famous Rio Barrancoso. Being the main source of water to Jurassic Lake, it's usually referred to as Jurassic River, and for good reason. Today is the Barrancoso River. Oh boy. As you can see over our shoulder here. Oh, this is one of the famous places here at Jurassic, the thing you hear about, these giant rainbows making their way up the river, catching them on mice, different kind of things. And the river's only like five, six feet across, and the fish are almost that big, so. Uh, it's <laughs> There's just some monsters wild. sitting in pools, which will get your anxiety level up. It's a fall run, they're spawning now. I'm really looking forward to this, being able to see them. It's the best thing, big ugly streamers just kind of drifting it through their mouths. You want to cheat, put on an egg pattern like this. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. Size 18 hook, guaranteed. For a 20 pound trout, it's gonna work every time. I figure if you drift over the top of them enough, they'll think that there's some kind of crazy hatch going on. And they'll just go wild. It's a matter of numbers. It's a numbers game right now. There he is. Okay, big one. I told you, boy. I told you. I told you told me to you. fish right. Got fun. You told me fish right, now they come left. <laughs> oh, you boy. Okay, I'll bring him down to you. Yeah, please. Just gotta wear him out a little bit. Big fish. Matt, he doesn't want to leave that pool, though. Pull to the left, but to the left. I'll bring him down, I'll bring him down. Not a bad little fish here. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo. What? laughs> that is a big rainbow. Wow. Look at this. this. This fish has got to be. How long do you think that fish is? Well, uh, 26. <laughs> 26. Dude. Look at that big old boy right there. <laughs> In the river. Oh, wow. Martin, that's a monster. Coming up in spawn, so you see they're really bright in color. Jeez, that's amazing. I was a little apprehensive, but although everybody guaranteed there's these monster fish, and then we get there, and there's monster fish. They, they see it, that's what you hear about, it. these 
giant rainbows in a little river. And let me tell you, it doesn't disappoint. fishing the Rio Barrancoso in southern Patagonia all morning. And after Drew's incredible fish, we both had yet to hook another one. We could see them everywhere, 10, 12, 15 pound fish. We just couldn't get them to bite. It was completely frustrating. caught his big fish. So it was my turn to get up there. We saw these fish. I wanted to catch them on a big streamer. Our team said they were right behind this boulder. I couldn't see them. I held back. I flipped the streamer in, kind of laid my fly line on the rock, and it just sat there and worked right in front of his face until he couldn't help himself. kind of undulate. I couldn't see him. Martin was up on top watching. And he just said, set! <laughs> Wham! There he was. Catching catch wow. fish like this in a river that's a... Jurassic Lake and Dry Fly Bay. We pretty much got rained out a couple days ago here with only a couple of small rainbows on the line. However, I know there are big fish on this shoreline and I intend to find them. As fishermen, we all have that spot that we catch the big one. We have to go back and fish it. You know it, you have just that sort of ingrained touch with that area, and Dennis has that with Dry Fly Bay. Martin's way up high right now. He's got a good vertical vantage point, kind of looking down, trying to see these cruising fish. And so uh, basically there's no excuse for Dennis and I not to catch him if he sees him, which is working out in the fish's favor right now. We have a, one spot we call Dry Fly Bay, and it's one of my favorite places to fish because I caught a 26.4 pound trout rainbow monster. <laughs> and it's mostly side fishing. You can uh, see the fish. You spot the fish and then you cast. It's, it's awesome. Sun's out though. We've been fishing Jurassic Lake in Southern Patagonia for a few days now. And in particular, Dry Fly Bay. But we just can't seem to lock into a feeding pattern. Although it makes for beautiful film, these calm waters and bluebird days are making the fishing tough. It's very untraditional fishing a uh, woolly bugger streamer under an indicator, but you know what? Nobody will make fun of you if you start catching fish. Doesn't that look pretty? Tell me you wouldn't eat that. Tell me, America. Tell me you wouldn't eat that.
Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, come here. Ah! I lost it. Ah! Come on. I lost it. Yes. Oh, man. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. We worked around, got to this spot, made a couple drifts. Martin said, try going long that way, so I cast it down there. Didn't sit very long, he was on it. He's gonna break me off on the rock to the knee. So cool, you can see him down there trying to brush you off on the rocks. <laughs> Fighting. Come here. Uh, ah. Good old man. Big fish. Here he comes. There he is. Boo! Nice. <laughs> well, that's a good fish. Beautiful. Fatty. What a fish, huh? Look at that fish. There. Jurassic. Good. Perfect. Nice work, buddy. Thank you. here. Martin spotted one right away and casting into the wind. I just had one rattle it a little bit. I missed him. But these are the kind of conditions finally we've been waiting for. They keep saying we need sunny and, and a chop. Well it's starting to happen now so looks like we got a few fish starting to get active. Hope it hope it's gonna work out. We only got a couple hours left. Yeah, no worries. No worries. We got time. Yeah. He's still green. He hasn't really 
fighting a lot, yeah. This is where you caught your last big one, right? Yeah, it's almost identical. You kind of know this spot. This is yeah. you, you, this is your spot. Not yet. I haven't got him in yet. Are you going to take You will. Oh, dude, <laughs> shaking like crazy. Yes, look at that thing. Look at that fish. Now that's a Jurassic Lake rainbow right there. Oh, man, I was just moving spots. He was right next to the bank. I threw that big uh, jig, that olive jig fly up there. Turned around, bobber's gone. That fish was on the end of it. <laughs> what a horse. Oh my God. <laughs> So if you've seen our show that we did here at, at Jurassic a few years back, I caught a giant fish that was pretty close to that same size. I don't know how big, but huge. It was caught within 10 yards of the exact same spot. Dry Fly Bay on this ledge. Wow. Man, I can't tell you. My, I'm still shaking. My heart's pumping. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. What at first seems like a dry, desolate place sure is full of beauty. All the living creatures here not only squeak out in existence, but seemingly thrive, unhindered by the modern world, all thanks to life-giving waterways that have been forged over millennia by the glaciers that reside high in the Andes Mountains. This place sure reminds me of home and my love for the high desert.